Hey everybody, welcome to History University. My name is Tom and I'll be your educator for this video. Today, most of the world uses a Gregorian calendar and according to that calendar, there are 21 centuries. I decided that I want to chronicle the most important moments of each century in a 21 part series that highlights the events that shaped the world. Before this video, I will be grossly simplifying some events because most of these can be a standalone video in their own right. But my goal here is to give an overview and a chronology rather than a deep dive into each year. Throughout this video, we will see three common themes, the rise of Christianity, the expansion of Rome, and Han dominance in China. All three of these events played a major role in the first century, and the impact of these events are still noticeable today. So without further ado, let's jump right in. In 1 AD, Western Europe sees the extinction of lions, but they still roam around in most of South and Eastern Europe. In 2 AD, the first census of China is held. This census is one of the most accurate in all of Chinese history. In 6 AD, the census of Quirinius is established, which is the Roman census of Judea. In this census, according to the Gospel of Luke, Mary is pregnant with Jesus at the time. In 9 AD, three Roman legions were ambushed and destroyed at Todeberg Forest by Germans under the leadership of Arminius. In 14 AD, the first emperor of Rome, Augustus Caesar, aka Octavian, dies after ruling for 40 years. In 25 AD, the Han Dynasty is restored by Lu Zhao, also known as Emperor Guangwu of Han. Between 28 and 75 AD, Buddhism reaches China and then it starts to spread. The religion currently has over 520 million followers. 29 AD is the traditional date of when Jesus of Nazareth begins his ministry. In a three to four year time period, he is credited with things like curing the blind and lepers, raising Lazarus from the dead, turning water into wine, among many other things that he is known for doing. 33 AD is the traditional date given for the crucifixion of Jesus. Between 33 and 36 AD, we get the conversion of Paul the Apostle, a man who would be instrumental in spreading Christianity. 13 of the 27 books in the New Testament have traditionally been attributed to Paul. It is in his Pauline epistles that he refers to Jesus of Nazareth as Christos, as English speakers would say Christ means the anointed one, and it is translated to the word Messiah in Hebrew. Christ is not a last name, but it is a title in Greek, as we said, Christos, meaning the anointed one. It is because of Paul's writing we refer to Jesus as Jesus Christ, Jesus the Messiah, Jesus the Savior, and so forth. Now the term Christ is synonymous with Jesus because of Paul's writing. In 40 AD, Caligula plans to invade Britain, but instead declares war on Poseidon. Caligula marches his men down to a pier and ordered his men to toss their spears and weaponry into the water. Between 40 and 43 AD, the Trong sisters lead a revolt in Vietnam. The sisters are Vietnamese military leaders who ruled for three years after rebelling in 40 AD against the first Chinese domination of Vietnam. They are regarded as national heroines of Vietnam today. In 43 AD, the conquest of Britain begins. The the city of Londinium is founded in this time period, although it is believed to have existed centuries before this date. The next few events have no exact date, so it's very hard to pin them to one year, but they are put in between 41 and 54 AD. In this time period, we see Buddhist monks in Sri Lanka first write down Buddhist teachings, creating the Pali Canon. The regions of present-day Afghanistan, Pakistan, and North India come under control of the Kushans, a nomadic people forced out of northwest China by the Han Dynasty. Roman historian Tacitus mentions the Swones, who will one day be called the Swedes. Kadinya, an Indian Brahmin, marries Soma and establishes the pre-Angkor Cambodian kingdom of Funan. The Goths settle in northern Poland, which they call Gothis Skanza, and shape the Weilbark culture. In 50 AD, the Christian Council of Jerusalem is held. This establishes some of the ethics of early Christianity. Between 58 and 88 AD, we get the rule of Ming and Zhang in the Eastern Han Dynasty. This is considered a golden age for these two. In 60 AD, Queen Boudicca of the Icinian England launches a rebellion against the Romans. Tens of thousands die and the Roman army is massively damaged. The rebellion fails, and Boudicca, who is then renamed Boudicca, commits suicide by poisoning herself. In 64 AD, we get the Great Fire of Rome, as well as the first mass persecution of Christians, which is an early significant recognition of Christians in Rome. Between 66 and 73 AD, we get the first Jewish-Roman War. In 69 AD, Cardamandua, the queen of the Brignates in northern England, is overthrown in a civil war. Her unpopular alliance with Rome is one of the reasons why she was overthrown. This action enrages the Romans so much that they go on to conquer the kingdom. In 70 AD, there is the destruction of Herod's temple in Jerusalem by the Romans under Titus. In 78 AD, we get the beginning of the Saka era used by South Asian calendars. In 79 AD, Pompeii is destroyed by an eruption of Mount Vesuvius. In 80 AD, the Colosseum is finished. The next few events occur in the late 1st century but also don't have an exact date. We have the Jewish Council of Jumnia. The council establishes that people who believe Jesus is the Messiah are excluded from the Jewish faith. During this time period, we also see the spread of the Roman Empire. It will reach its largest size under Trajan. 
At this time period, we see bookbinding becoming popular. The codex will soon replace a scroll. Bookbinding is a very important technology. It allowed for a stack of paper to be bound together along one edge. This allows for more paper or parchment to be placed together, which means there is more information that can be stored. Bookbinding allowed for the spread of more information with less resources. So that essentially wraps up the most influential events of the first century. Now I want to list some of the most influential people during this time period. We usually look at famous people relative to their civilization, not their time period, so I think it's cool to see who else was alive during the same time period but in a different place. So we have Arminius, a Germanic military leader, Augustus Caesar, the first emperor of Rome, Ban Chao, a Chinese general, Boudicca, the Celtic queen, Caligula, emperor of Rome, Claudius, an emperor of Rome, Guangwu of Han, emperor of China, Hero of Alexandria, a Greek mathematician and engineer, Jesus of Nazareth, the Messiah in Christianity, we have the Twelve Apostles, John the Baptist, a religious prophet of Christianity and Islam, Nero, an emperor of Rome, St. Paul, the man who helped write the New Testament, Peter Simon, a Christian apostle who was the first pope of Rome, Filio of Alexandria, a Jewish Hellenistic philosopher, Pliny the Elder and Pliny the Younger, both Roman writers, Plutarch, a Greek historian and biographer, Seneca, a Roman writer, philosopher, and statesman, Tacitus, a Roman historian, Tiberius, a Roman emperor, Trajan, a Roman emperor, the Trong sisters, Vietnamese rebel leaders, Vespasian, a Roman emperor, and Wang Mang, the founder and emperor of the Xing dynasty. All right, guys, that concludes my video on the first century. I hope I was able to introduce you to some interesting events and people of the first century. I like how this topic gave me perspective on what happened and when. I found it cool that Augustus Caesar, Jesus, and the Trong sisters were all doing notable things within 30 years. Uh, if you can, please leave a comment down below on what event you liked the most. I am thinking about making an individual video on multiple events from this 100 year period. Thank you guys very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you can. And most importantly, have a good day. Thank you.